Good morning, it's Tuesday, October 22nd, and this is Slices of Wenatchee. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories and other announcements every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Today, we're taking a closer look at Lions Locomotive Park, where every Thursday at noon, the city rolls in for their weekly cleanup of the area beneath the Senator George Seller Bridge. And later, over 200 attendees gathered last week for the Wenatchee School District's Migrant and Multilingual Night. Before we begin, have you joined Neighbor yet? If not, download the app today and join local conversations about issues that matter. Neighbor is a site just for our local community focused on facts, not misinformation. Best of all, it's free for everyone. To learn more, visit WenatcheeWorld.com slash N-A-B-U-R. Now our feature story. For many months now, Lions Locomotive Park has become a hotspot for those without a home. It's where people come to rest, to gather, and to exist, but it's also become a point of contention for the city. Each week, city workers haul away the remnants of a community trying to get by, dumping out mostly food waste and household trash. By the end of September, they'd removed over 465,000 pounds of garbage from this area. Quote, We come down every morning to give them garbage bags, says Dave Erickson, Wenatchee's Director of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services. Some people bag up their stuff, some don't. It's a constant push and pull, the city providing tools for cleaning up, the homeless trying to stay out of the way. On this particular Thursday, things were different. The city had also started a new project, fencing off the embankment under the bridge. Apple Valley Fence was on site, putting up barriers meant to prevent graffiti and vandalism. Most of the people who'd camped there moved away in time, a mix of city staff, police, and workers from Catholic charities giving them room to clear out before the cleanup crew arrived. Ricardo Cervantes, 47, was among those still in the area as the cleanup started. He's been living without a stable home for the last decade, ever since a split with his wife. He was there with his dog, Nadie, Spanish for nobody. He says he's applied for one of the pallet shelters recently opened by Wenatchee Rescue Mission and hopes to get in soon. For Ricardo, it's about more than a roof. It's the hope of a hot shower, something that makes life just a little more manageable. Not everyone feels the same about the pallet shelters, though. Joe Wiggins, who's been homeless for 11 years, said he's lost a job recently because of what he called stupid rules at the rescue mission. He can't leave his dog's scooter at the shelter while he goes to work, and the curfew, 10 p.m., feels restrictive. They try to run us like children, he says. Nearby, J.R. echoed similar sentiments, expressing reluctance to apply for the shelter at all. For people like him, living without a home is a constant calculation. Your things might get stolen, you might get moved along, but at least there's no curfew. For J.R., even recovering stolen items gives him something to do each day. It's hard, but it's predictable in a way that shelters, with their rules and regulations, might not be. Amid all of this, we met Sandra Dotson, who lives in a duplex near the park. At 72, she's no stranger to what it's like being without a home. She went through housing programs herself back in 2010, working her way from treatment at the Center for Alcohol and Drug Treatment to a YWCA shelter to transitional housing. She's been in her current home for 10 years now, but she remembers what it was like to live without stability. Sandra shares her worries for today's unhoused community. Quote, they're not building affordable housing, she says. I have met people at different parks. They were displaced because landlords raise rents. They don't have enough housing. They don't have enough resources. She wishes the city would designate a space where folks could pitch their tents, a place with security but also with dignity. As the city continues its cleanups, the cycle goes on. People displaced, trash removed, fences built. But beneath it all are the stories of people doing their best, day after day, to make it one more night, one more week. Quote, When people are put in certain circumstances, whatever their vices were or are, it will increase because of this situation, Sandra says. And that's what people aren't understanding. You gotta give people dignity and hope for the future that their life is gonna get better. Next, we're talking about the Migrant and Multilingual Night at Wenatchee High School, an event empowering families and celebrating cultural pride. Last Thursday, the Wenatchee School District hosted this event to help parents support their children at home. Over 200 attendees enjoyed cultural performances and pizzoli while learning about their children's education. Nancy Navarro-Ortiz, the Migrant Education Program Coordinator, led the event. She highlighted the importance of parents understanding what their children are learning and encouraged better communication at home. She also emphasized mastering their native language to support additional language learning. Families were divided by grade levels. 
Anesa Lemus Pulido offered tips for elementary parents, while Brittany Hacho emphasized preparation and daily reading for middle and high school parents. Claudia Beauvais from North Central Washington Libraries distributed over 200 books in both English and Spanish, encouraging reading for all families. Parents found the event helpful in understanding and applying what their children learn in school at home. The next Migrant Family Night will be on January 30th, 2025, a great opportunity to support children and celebrate culture. Thanks for listening. For more information about all the stories you heard today, visit WenatcheeWorld.com. The Wenatchee World has been engaging, informing, and inspiring North Central Washington communities since 1905. We encourage you to subscribe today to keep your heart and mind connected to what matters most in North Central Washington. Thank you for starting your morning with us, and don't forget to tune in again on Thursday.